Hello again, everyone. We are Gaming by Gaslight. Welcome back to Sunless Skies. So, last time we were continuing our hunt for the road to Albion, and as it turns out, it is not there. It is right here in the corner. So, we'll be heading down there to go check that out in a second, but uh, while, we were, while I was looking for it, I've just been doing a couple of... Uh, couple of merchanty type quests here just to get us some more money and also we have all kinds of hours now so that's useful anyway before we go anywhere we've got a few interesting things here in lustrum so let's go check that out for one we want to find the runaway acrobat bleary-eyed prospector has seen someone of their description they are attempting to make a living as a miner all right you find the acrobat fast asleep in the camp outside the mine. Their clothes are soiled by coal dust. It takes some effort to shake them awake. Once conscious, they push your hand away. You're here to take me back to the circus, aren't you? Good luck to the miners without me. Who will they send into the upper crevices now? They burrow back into their blankets. So it goes. Just give me 15 more minutes to rest and I'll join you. All right, jolly good. And also, uh, yeah, there's, we, I picked up a quest, uh, just before we start recording with the amenable host back in Magdalens, who's looking for his identity, because apparently his work not only causes, uh, you know, sometimes his patience to go crazy, and, you know, be unable to distinguish reality from the fantasy, but apparently he himself has started to have his reality blurred a little bit. So yeah, we're trying to figure out who he really is, or was, I guess, before he came to Magdalens. Anyway, successful prospectors tend to leave their mark on the mountain. People remember those who are able to leave, flush with ours. The locket is passed around the camps of prospectors. Most scratch their heads, others sigh and look away. An elderly prospector approaches, carrying her hat in her hands. You're the one looking for old Gray, she sighs. Long dead. Shot up south of the mountain. Wouldn't share his hours. Fool. No point in rising high on the mountain if there's no one at the bottom holding you up. Ah. So nothing definitively conclusive here. So we we could return to the amenable host or look elsewhere. And there's a few other places to check out which we'll, you know, do by the by. But uh, let's go to the pub. And I've, I've been thinking to myself, why don't we speak with the weary prospector? I mean, we've got plenty of sovereigns. We'll, we'll buy his old his old, uh, thing. Ew, his spit is thick and yellow with phlegm. Ew. Make sure I was wearing a glove if I was gonna do this. Anyway, there we go. Alright. Oh, we gained a little bit of terror doing that as well. You grit your teeth, spit in your hand, and shake. You'll take the first opportunity to scrub your hand clean of any diseases you've just been exposed to. Yeah, that sounds like something I would do myself. The weary prospector nods approvingly and calls over an hour, Harker. She will escort you to your new claim whenever you like. All right. We'll go ahead and do that right now, actually. Let's go to the claim fields. Go to our very own claim on the mountain. And let's see. We could... Ah, actually, this seems like a good idea. We could assign uh, some crew members. Yes. All right. More crew you assign, the faster new hours will be ready for collection. All right. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll also go to the trading post and pick up a handful of supplies to get us ready to go. And let's see, do we have any cheap paperbacks? The answer is no. I, I always find it funny that there's like armaments you can buy in Lustrum that are cheap. Like assuming you have the right connections. And at the same time, the uh, criminal element seems to, uh, or I guess the rebels here, they want... Uh, you know, you'd unlock some stuff for them. Anyway, I figure I will make my way away. I want to restock on crew in London, but then again, when we get to Albion, maybe there'll be some stuff to do there as well to, you know, stoke up our claims. In any case, I will see you when we get to the uh, transport station. Alrighty then, and a quick stop. Whoa, boy. Quick stop in Port Prosper, just because it occurs to me. Yeah, we can go to the clock tower and we can turn in some chorister honey and also or nectar and some bronzewood since we have these things. 
So let's deliver those materials. Huzzah! An angel bringing gifts. Actually, a point out, you'll be needing payment. Damn straight. Ho oh, ho ho, 800 sovereigns. And considering the fact I got both of these things for free... Excellent. You are paid extremely well for the delivery, and the foreman shakes you warmly by the hand. Won't take us no time now, he says with a grin. Maybe we should name the damn clock after you, eh? Excellent, excellent. Alrighty then. Oh, we have one Sky Story and we need free in order to encourage others to seek adventure. I bet there's an easy way eventually somewhere to, to farm those, but, you know, time will tell. Oh, you know what, while we're here, we'll write a port report and also check out what's going on here. Not a soul in Port Prosper recognizes the locket. Use all that then. Does he still wear his hair like that? Fancy. Become familiar refrains from people who are attempting to put on very poor, posh English accents, apparently. Or, not posh so much as the... Uh, whatever accent it is I was attempting to do there and failed miserably. More promising is the house you saw painted in the amenable host's chamber. You locate several candidates, all apparently repainted over the last couple of years, but one is in the exact location near the station as depicted in the host's painting. Nobody seems to remember who owned it or why, but apparently it had once been associated with the Parlor of Virtue, not long after Port Prosper's foundation. Hmm. Interesting. You don't suppose the truth of the old amenable host is that, like, all of his, all of these possible paths that we can investigate, there's one more. I forget exactly where it is. We'll look into it in a, you know, later. Right now we're going to Albion, of course. But yeah, if, like, somehow all of his pasts are, like, actually true. I mean, the ones in Lustrum seem to, like, actually know him. So that would seem to be the most promising. Where is this place just represents a house, and anyone could get a portrait of a house, you know, as a prop, so... Of course, then again, depending on how, uh... How detailed this host, uh, was in building up his past, it's, I suppose, entirely possible that, uh, he just simply... You know... Yeah... Like, he actually spent time in the Lestrum as a miner, and then faked his death once he was, you know, done, or whatever. Interesting questions, really. Alright, let's get our travel permit. There we go. Union Jack Blue. Awesome. Now, we can travel to Albion second class, because we've got a bunch of hours. And we also have our transit permit, so let's get going. Oh god, I didn't realize we'd get terror while doing it. Interesting. Away! You deliver the barrows of the... Barrels. Barrels. Gaslight, pronounce it right. To the relays hour looms, which clank and grind, they spin a jacket of fresh time in which your locomotive will make its journey. Enclosed in your engine's pocket of hours, it's hard to say how long the passage will take. Unseasoned hours tend to be melancholy and anxious. Your journey is likely to be wearing. The machinery grinds and stirs, the steam vents, the sigils of the edifice burn with sullen fire. A force like a great hand seizes your engine. I wonder if I'm going to need more hours to get home. Ooh, cool. Very cool. Kind of feel bad for this guy who's like stuck here. And away we go! Ar and Avast, the Albion Reach Transit Relay. We have arrived. We are safe and sound and... Ah, interesting. This is kind of in the middle. Anyway, we probably want to go to London first and foremost, since, you know, oh my god, this is beautiful. Wow. It just kind of stretches on forever, doesn't it? Ooh, ooh, look at that. We can level up. We'll do that once we get to London, though, just because, you know, our terror is kind of up and... But my god. Damn, this is sexy. Like... Like, I gotta be honest, I, like, I look at this and I think to myself, you know, despite all, like, the eldritch monstrosities, the rampant cannibalism, the general insanity that permeates uh, most people, you know, you either, you either die sane or you live long enough to go crazy. And sometimes you end up doing both multiple times. Or something like that. Anyway, despite all those uh, minor difficulties, I actually don't think I would mind living in this world. 
For Sun again, this is in like the early 1800s before the invent- or early 1900s actually. Before the invention of toilet paper, if I recall, and also indoor plumbing. Or was there indoor plumbing by this point? Might have been in the more developed areas, but then again, sanitation probably still wasn't all that good. The air smells of iron and sweat and misery. That's disturbing. But anyway, the, the point is, if I at least lived in this world and had the opportunity to be a, uh, a captain of my own, you know, if we were in like fallen London, like, you know, a, a Z captain, or a cool uh, train captain like we are now. This wouldn't be a terrible world to live in. All oh, right, the bit between. The officials of Brabazon never bothered to formally name this waypoint. Captain's dock here to pick up goods or deliver workers. It's not a place to linger because of the proximity to the accelerated time of the work world. I see. All right. Yes, Brabazon work world. The first work world to be established in Albion. Working here, debtors can escape prison. They remain till their debts are repaid and a ticket away has been funded. The primary industry of that is, or is that of hours processing, which has the side effect of accelerating time on the work world's surface. So in other words, don't go down to the surface. The dock is between Brabazon work world and Little Nice, where the more privileged overseers reside. The dock is, for captain's sake, nearer Little Nice in the work world. Unexpected aging would deter even the greediest captain from arriving. Right. So don't go there. <laughs> Ooh, what's this? You have a barrel of unseasoned hours you can donate to the tour. It'll be used to protect you from Brabazon's accelerated time. Interesting. Attempt to converse with the overseer. Or we could have a tour if we had our fancy ministry stamped permit. Yeah, let's, let's have a chat with the old fellow. Ooh, look at that. We actually gained some sky stories. Try again in 15 days. I'm terribly sorry, I don't have permission to speak with you. The overseer is supervising a small group of workers loading crates onto a locomotive docked alongside your own. They're working slowly. He seems declined to rush them. Alright, so another for, or 15 days. Cool. Let's go to Little Nice. Little Niece. I'm gonna say Little Niece. French, you know. Big double doors separate the bit between from Little Niece. The fresh or the fresh air of this pretty village is in sharp contrast to that near the dark. By dark, I mean dock. First of all, let's write a port report. The overseers here work hard to ensure little niece remains perfect, from the freshly painted fence uh, curlaces, curlicues, to the newly mown grass of the lawn. It's hard to get a sense of what's going on in Brabazon from your current curated surroundings. The overseers themselves are no use. They must have been briefed. Each gives you clearly sanitized information. You only have to speak to four before you hear a repetition. You'll have to go down to the work world itself to learn anything true about Brabazon. Oh. Interesting. Oh, we could recline on a bench. Oh, and it'll lower our terror a little bit. Cool. The grass is immaculately cut. The hedges are trimmed. Stars burn silverer above. But it is hard to ignore the thunder of the hour looms, spinning their knot of hurrying time over the work world below. Cool. But remember to come back later. All right, we'll go back. Let's see. We can't go here because we don't have enough salon stewed gossip, which of course we'll have to go farm up eventually at some point. All right, let's go. Yeah, let's go to the tour to the Brabazon work world. We run this tour at cost, you know, says the overseer who collects your contribution. She hands the group over to the tour leader, who shepherds you all into a side room. Right? Ooh, a carriage clock. Tour leader hands out thick clo or cloaks to keep off the smut. The group covers itself. The hood lends one woman, with her hair coiled up high on her head, an awkward shape and unexpected height. Satisfied, the tour leader begins a briefing. All right. As you know, time on the work worlds moves more velocitous velocitously than it does outside. In order to attempt or exempt you from the effects, we've had the loom spin a fold of external hours to cover the tour. Please carry these carriage clocks. They will show you how much time your protection will last for. Please don't stray. He pauses for emphasis. It is crucial that you stay off the tour. If your time runs out, every minute it takes for us to realize could be hours for you. There is flurry of anxious whispers. Once it has subsided, the group is led onto the work world. Kind of sucks for the poor people who have to work on these things. They age faster and they really don't get paid well. 
Talk about your gap between the rich and poor, huh? Not only do the rich get more money and can live longer by slowing their own personal time, but the poor get less money and have even less time to enjoy it because their time is faster. Now I might have to resign what I said about liking to live in this world. Sounds like it's pretty shit for people on the bottom, which is where I would probably be if I lived here. Anyway. Your group is accompanied by two overseers. The overseer bringing up the rear is a woman in her early 30s. She checks her carriage clock compulsively. Admire the rugs. Our first stop on the tour is the Brabzon Rug Weaving Factor or Workshop. The overseer beams and gestures for you to enter a building larger than any other on the street. Oh, cool. A simple act of human warmth. Yeah, that's sure. I mean, we can always admire the rugs in every time. An attractive young worker leaps up to greet you. This workshop was built thanks to the generosity of Lady Titter? Teeter? Whatever her name is. Tucker, maybe. Please admire our beautiful handcrafted rugs and weavings. Exported for sale in London. Workers here gain skills that can support them for the rest of their days, which will probably not be very long. The group of workers nods and smiles at you. One stands to better display their work. Never thanks you for your visit. The youth is the last to see you out. Perhaps I'll see you elsewhere in Albion. Oh, I certainly hope so, but you're going to be an old man by the time we meet you. Probably. Yay, they smile back, and their smiles are as stiff and rehearsed as the line the youth delivered. The tour moves on. Tisk tisk. All right, glass factory. The air is yellow of smog. Visit the glass workers. A fascinating aspect of Brabazon is the mutually beneficial relationship between the place and its workers. The overseer makes a sweeping gesture. Make note of the smog. I'll explain more inside. Yes, because the smog is very important. Mol or the building you <clears throat> the building you enter is heated by vast furnaces and ovens. Workers are blowing molten glass. The smog prevents much of the sun's heat from reaching Brabazon. Without factories such as this, Brabazon would freeze. The workers keep the factories alive. The factories heat the work world, and it becomes a pleasant place to live. Here, work enriches life. This is all total bullshit, isn't it? It's all propaganda, man. Gotta fight the system. Fight the power, dog. You know, bring down the monarchy. Rise to a, you know, seize the means of production and so on and so forth. Anyway. Several of the group coup in admiration. One man boasts about his Brabzon glass collection. A young lady in gaudy finery turns to you. My parents paid for the main furnace to ensure that the poor would never go without. What did you fund? Uh, I've got to admit, we have not funded anything. We're a locomotive captain traversing the wilderness, defeating horrors, delivering goods. But perhaps one day, you will engage in charitable endeavors, endeavors, whichever. Ooh, there's our sexy salon stewed gossip. The young lady blushes. Oh, so dangerous, so romantic. That sounds much more fun. Is it difficult? Perhaps my parents will buy me a ship. Yeah, typical rich people. I... Merely got a small loan of a million dollars from my parents in order to buy my ship. You think they're just gonna buy it for you? For shame. Anyway, she seems bored for much of the rest of the tour. It seems the frills of your profession outweigh the charm of inherited, or yeah, inherited virtue. Okay. The tour moves on through the upper layers of Brabazon towards a refinery that belches heat like a dying dragon. Please line up here, that's it. The overseer indicates alongside a long, low window. It is recently cleaned, or it's been recently cleaned to a shine. Inside, hard-working souls will find raw hours imported from the reach. After this process, they may be spun in hour looms and put to use. He taps his carriage clock as an example. The refinery is a clamoring, roaring space of long benches, sweating workers and rolling smoke. The overseer explains, the geodes contain the hours or, or containing the hours are cracked open, and the fiber strands of salt like time are separated with small chisels and saws. Many women and men do the former work, children the latter. The filaments are then passed through a series of furnaces to remove impurities, which are in turn brushed away in an indigo slush. The slush is raked to ensure not even a stray minute is lost. Once the seconds and minutes and hours are extracted, they are seasoned. Taken from a very high temperature to a very low one, and back. After this, the tangle clumps, the color of the sky just before dawn or after dusk, are carted and wound onto spools and long filaments. You know, I actually really wish there was like an animation or something to see this process, because it just sounds like so 
so weird trying to picture like time as an abstract concept being like turned into like a physical entity and like like wound on a loom imagining it as like this really like kind of like shimmery shiny multicolored thread that's just like like it's there but at the same time it's not there if that makes any sense that's my image anyway the overseer raps sharply on the window as one, the nearby workers look up, smile, and wave. Oh dear. Let's linger just a little bit. We have plenty of time. Oh dear. Seconds after your group has moved on, a worker in the middle of the front row leaps from her seat. She pulls on the striped blazer that had been hidden on her lap and dashes from the room. She is replaced by another, gray and exhausted. No one looks up. Oh my god. Well... Leaving the refinery behind, you turn through the streets towards the careless ring of hammers. A short walk, then you enter a dusty yard. The tour leader adopts a noble frown. Unfortunately, not all work on Brabazon can cre or be creatively fulfilling. We also produce raw components like gravel and aggregates. Oh dear. You have lo looped back to a yard near the bit between. The second overseer is already there. Men and women, hard with muscle, bright with sweat. Are breaking rocks with sledgehammers. They wear vests and breeches with cloth masks to keep out the worst of the dust. We equip our workers with safety gear just in case prolonged exertion in this air might prove unpleasant. As you can see, the regular exercise ensures they are strong and healthy. Many leave Brabazon with athletic inclinations and pursue fitness as a profession. That's total bullshit. By the time they leave here, I bet they're like old, broken, and tired. A stout gentleman with a monocle sidles up to you. This whole place is just marvelous, eh? Keep busy while paying off debts. Give her new skills and education. Simply marvelous. Uh, yes. You know, this sounds a little bit like what I would probably do in real life, but in reality, what I'd be thinking in my head is that this is... It's terrible. It's a farce. It's a joke. The man frowns. You're wrong, of course, he nods sagely. Yes, they must spend some of their years here, but what would they do with those years otherwise? Squander them, suffer and die. His expression is condescending. Better the improving conditions of honest work, don't you think? You refrain from punching him in the smile. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I, I don't truly believe that any of this is bettering people. There's cheap labor at the expense of the poor and, and uh, you know... Under, underprivileged, really. Anyway, complete the tour. It's important we return in plenty of time, so I'm afraid we'll have to end the tour here. The lead overseer circles the group, shepherding the huddle through the doors back to the bit between. Excellent. The second overseer takes a head count, a poor one, for she double counts twice before giving up. Nevertheless, she signals her partner to go ahead. Oh, so we could have lost people on that tour. Good, good job. Real, real nice uh, professional quality work you got going on here. I hope you appreciated our little tour, and we shall pass your thanks onto the workers of Brabazon. Perhaps, when they've paid off their debts, you'll see them again. The overseer shakes the hands of the most prominent donors. Of course, this entire group endeavor is thanks to your generosity. He, mur er, he murmurs to them. While the group preens, he collects the carriage clocks. That's sickening. The overseer who takes your spent carriage clock draws you aside. You're a skyfarer, aren't you? We need so or we've need for someone uh, without official connections to the governor to help us with a delicate matter. Ooh, cool! I'll do that. There are unsavory individuals on Brabazon Workworld. They inveigle others to do their work so that they might have the time to plot. They are fermenting unrest. He shakes his head. It won't do. It just makes the other workers unhappy. Next time, see if you can sneak away from the tour. I hear their leader is looking for outside assistance. He winces. For once, time is on their side. They have so long to plan relative to us. If you hear anything, pass it to me. I'll be around here. Okay. Uh. Yes, yes. We'll we'll make it sound like we're in on this, but I think we're gonna work on destroying the uh, the system. Thank you. I'm so glad you understand. He smiles. I'll be putting a case to the governor. I'll make sure you're paid for any information that helps us quell unrest. He shakes your hand and indicates to a barrel in the corner. You'll need these. Come back to me if you hear anything. I'll be around. 
Though I, I have to say, I can I write a port report now of, of this place now that we've like been on the tour? Okay. Can't actually do that, gotcha. Alright. Actually, let's listen to the governor's request and then we'll wrap this up. Rabazon must be self-sufficient. Without industry to justify their lighting, our fires will go out. We must have work. Brow furrows. The workers refuse to understand they live so long as they work. That is not a threat. It is a fact of living here. They require hope. Give it to them. Not enough to stir them into revolt, but enough that the fires remain lit. Okay, I can probably consider doing that. All right. All right, and we still can't really write a proper report. All right, that, that's cool enough. We'll go back to the bit between and let's have a quick stop at the bazaar. Ooh, tea. And some cheap hours. That's also useful to know. Uh, but yeah, we need a couple of supplies. You know what? I am actually... This is going to be a little bit of a longer video, I think, on account of... Uh, yeah, I want to I want to get to London today. Because that just seems like the, the proper thing to do. And if it's like New Winchester, then I have to assume it's like near the middle of the world, so... Let's do that. And since this place is new, we, uh, I won't cut away while we're like traversing here, as we're still kind of getting our bearings and whatnot. I really hope we actually find London in a not too untimely fashion, as it were, since we don't want to we don't want to run out of uh, or well, I don't want to get my terror up yet. I don't really know what negative effects having high terror will like stow upon us, and there's probably some benefits to having high terror as well. You know, it's a balancing game, really. Some some plot lines probably require us to have high terror because you know we're like on the verge of madness or whatever. But yeah, also, you know what, I think I'll save leveling up for our next episode. That'll be like how we start things off. But anyway, we will uh, continue searching for London. It also occurs to me, perhaps we might have got directions to London at the actual train station, now that I think about it. Well, it was a nice thought while it lasted. Oh, oh, there's something here. I mean, I really like the fact that Albion, it just seems so, like, dense compared to the Reach, where there's, like, a lot of empty space. But here, here we've got, like, all this. We've got our, our towns and our, our buildings and, like, vast cities that are all, like, densely put together. Ooh, the patient princess. Is this London? It might be London. It might not be, though. It's truly difficult for me to say. You know, I'll, I'll send the bat out to, uh, like, discern exactly where the train station is. Aha! Okay, there we go. There's probably more stuff to unlock here. And... Is that, is that guy stuck? Dreadnoughts rumble through the London. Watchful as sheep though. You know what? Assuming this fellow is stuck, can I, uh... Can I just, like, easily kill him here? Nope, he broke free. Oh, I think he's turning faster than I can turn. And he's got machine guns. Oh, dear. Alright, so the key is to stay behind these, uh... Blustery beauties. Oh, God. Down we're going! No, please, please don't shoot me, please. I'm sorry! I'm so, so very sorry. I thought you were an easy kill. Ooh, the throne of hours. I thought you were an easy kill. I was wrong. Very, very sorry. All right, so this is like where old, old Vicky lives. Cool. Must be like the posh Upper East Side or whatever. Or Upper South Side, Upper Central Side, whatever. Cool. So, old Vicky is like immortal as long as she's sitting there on the throne. Cool story, cool story. And I wonder if that dreadnought's forgiven me yet. But I mean, damn, do you see it? It's got like machine gun fire. Oh, hell. Yeah. We've got a long way to go before we can really take these things on, I imagine. Eddie's promise, cool. 
All right. So yeah, we'll we'll park in London, and that's where we're gonna wrap up. Also, listen to that music. And I mean, this game is just—it's so beautiful. It's so. Are you, are you are you crashed? You're like kind of shining and stuff, man. You okay, dog? Oh god, that guy's still shooting at me. Ooh, can I get him to like attack this, and then they'll like fight one another, and I won't have to worry about them? I don't know. Steam. Ah, here we go. Though I did notice that thing was smoking ever so gently, so I think we did do some damage. You're near London, or you near London, where her renewed majesty reigns from the throne of ours. Well, God save our noble queen, I suppose. You know, except she's probably slowly, slowly turning into some kind of horrible eldritch abomination. Aha! We've made it to old London, which falls no more. Alright, so I think we'll leave things here for now. And uh, next time we'll explore London a little bit. But until the next time, as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Don't forget to hit that like button. Or maybe leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. And I will see all you in the next video.